So let's get started. Uh, I was saying that this seminar will be recorded and uploaded here at the YouTube channel. And here we also, uh, you know, we trade every day. For those that, you know, you don't know me, what I do and everything, I cooperate with investing once in a while just, you know, to open um, what it is price action trading, which is, of course, the, the trading that, that I do it and that I learn. But I started trading now in indicators, and that was the only thing that I was trading with my first year. That was like over 10 years ago. So now my first year, I lost like over $80,000 using indicators. And then um, everything like was opening to my knowledge over the price action trading. And that's when I came to the price action. That's why I started it, by losing a lot of money. And over the period of... Um, of six to ten months, I was with the money that I lost using indicators back to back to me. Of course, I didn't start with three thousand dollars to get back eighty thousand. I started it with over ten thousand dollars for you to have a reference. But um, and that's how the project of Watch My Trading started it because, like myself, most of you maybe are still using indicators, are still, you know, with the moving averages, stochastics, MACDs, and Bollingers, and, and, you know, all of that. And um, that's how we started it, basically. Yes, we started basically the um, the trading with, I mean, watch my trading, with the, uh, the idea of helping people not to go for the wrong path of the knowledge, which was indicators. So here what you're going to see is like many videos and with different topics. And on a daily basis, you will see a market brief, a market brief, which is the summary of our live trading seminars. You know, we trade every day. This is my, you know, my account. I use, you know, a broker from UK, whatever. I give my entry points, my exit point on daily basis. I'm a day trader. I do a scalping. And that's all I do. I don't use stop loss for you to know. I hedge the market. So hedging is a different strategy when you work with high volume, um, you know, um, basically markets. If you use high volume market to stop loss, it will not be a recommendation to you. So um, this is one financial. I don't know if you know it. It's one financial. It's like, uh, you know, top five, you know, brokers around. It's, um, you know, execution is very important for you. The spread is very important for you. And also that the broker will respect you, the, your price executed. So if you got all those qualities, you are into a good broker. So like I said, ex execution, price, and they respect the price that you execute with, without any tricks in the, in the middle, you know. And that is, that's very important for you. Let me, sure, let me, let me mention it here. So now, the um, I don't know if we have Carly here. Are you here? Let me see if we got. Uh, are you here? Okay. No, no, I don't see your chat. Oh, there you are. Okay, so let me introduce you to our representative for English speaking, and she is Carla um, Reyes. She will help you out with everything you need. If you need the indicator, if you need the link into our live trading sessions and everything, she's the she's the person. She's the one, and she's gonna write you at here in the chat for all of you her email, so you can request. If you don't have the indicator, she can help you out with that. And also she will get in touch with you with different, um, with different, um, you know, material that we have an invitation to our open seminars. And we also have a, the link for our telegram, the telegram link. It is when we give the recommendations, not signals, but let me show you to you. This is our telegram. And here, what I do is like I typed in all our, all our, the trading of the day. Okay, so for example, give me one second so I can show it to you. And the telegram basically is based on price action entries. 
And I mentioned there the entry point, the exit point, and all of that. That's right here. So you see, I paste also the market brief of the day, and I give you signals during the day. You know, sometimes I'm pretty, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, entries. Sometimes it's not that many, but you know, if it is safe, the entry, I'll type it in here, and then you get the chance to replicate into your account. So, and I, why do you? On the Telegram, also using price action and hedging. So, if you use a stop loss, then this price right here at the chart, <clears throat> the expiration price, is this for you. This is a price for you to either use a stop loss or to hedge the market. Like I said, if you go for the high volume market, then you better hedge because the stop loss most likely will get activated every time. And if you don't know how to hedge, you basically go for the stop loss. But this is the price that you go to. And by EP means expiration price. So I say buy stop, take profit, you know, sell stop. Sometimes it's just to sell, take profit and expiration price, or buy, take profit and expiration price. And also I why you if you're hedging the market, I'll tell you how to move the hedge, where to close and where to keep it. Okay? So that is the interaction that we have in our Telegram. So the, um, uh, well, the thing is, I mean, from my experience, yeah, the, this, that is Carla for you guys, Carla Hayes. She is the person that will get in touch with you afterwards to send you the recording, to send you whatever you need in order to follow, to follow us for, and for future references. So now, um, like I said, what you see here, this is my account, it's an MT4. MT4, I don't know if you're, you're familiar with this. It's just the most friendly technology. And the one that you can install the pivot points because the pivot points, some technologies are not coming by default. You need to install it. There's just a few technologies uh, around there with brokers that you can, you can, uh, uh, you can have the pivot points, but I highly recommend you to download the MT4, to install the um, install the uh, indicator, and then Carla can help you also with that, how to install it. We do have instructions how to install the indicator, how to use it. So now the thing is, as you can see here, there's no indicators at all. There's just the pivot point. And the pivot point, the good thing about this is that I learned price action first understanding the pivot. And second, I understand how to set up a market strategy based on pivots and based on price action. So I'll, as many of you maybe, uh, you are new to price action, you are new to pivot points. And to me, it got me like a month and a month and two weeks to get used to get out of all the indicators and stuff. Because the thing is, this market, at first, you learn it the opposite way that you're supposed to learn it. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to understand how indicators explain you here what is going to happen here with the price. And that is the main uh, mistake that we all do when we start any market stocks, you know, indexes, or so whatever market you are into. You try to guess, uh, the, try to understand how candlesticks, how, you know, indicators and everything, why is you here? Trying to predict how the, the price is going to react to it. And it's absolutely the opposite. And in, in this market, high volume markets like CFDs and indexes or whatever market that you know that you can hold transactions and get out of your trades within, I don't know, within the day, one day or two days or whatever is your strategy. It's the actually opposite direction. You go first here to the price. And then you understand what's going to happen here at the chart. But it's not the opposite. And the indicators will give you the wrong insight. The indicators will show you first all, you know, all the charties and you know, the flags and stuff. Even Fibonacci will try to make you understand or try to predict what's going to happen with the price based on the chart. So price action is focusing here in the price and it's going to show you what's going to happen here at the chart. You know, and that is the main thing. That is the main thing. Okay, the problem, the second problem, <laughs> the second issue about price action is that there's not such a thing as 
a, you know, I say basically a book. I do have a paper that I wrote, I can share it with you too, about price action. There's no such a thing as a theory about it, you know. But here, with this seminar, I'm going to give you the, you know, the first few steps that you need in order to start trading with price action. So the mission of Watch My Trading, how we started it, it was motivated because of the loss that I had. Because of the loss that I had when I first started it, and I, you know, I didn't give up. I never gave up on this, on the, on the market. And then, but of course, I didn't know, you know, what else to learn. Because I knew all of this, all of the lists that you see here, I knew all the indicators, all of them. You know, I was, I was an expert in every single one, you know. And even though, even though all about indicators, chartism, I knew by memory all type of candlesticks and stuff, I was learning the, I was focusing my attention, my learning into the wrong strategy, into the wrong side of, of the market. Absolutely right. I didn't know how to trade against myself. I didn't know how to hedge. I didn't know how to get out of a trade that expired the market. I didn't know how to recognize when a price it was a buy price, when a price it was a sell price. I didn't know how to identify market price area. I didn't know if I was trading into buy pressure area or into sell pressure area. I don't know many things that now makes a lot of sense. If I knew back then, of course, my loss was not going to be it. You know, I will, I will learn, of course, how to get out of a transaction, how to hedge, how to know when my order expires, how to close it. And then you have your consistency and the discipline for the rest of the year. Now, that's when you start learning the right path of the market with price action. That's when you get, an, you get to understand exactly what you're doing. You know, because before that, you know, none of us understand. The easy part here is like, okay, well, indicator tells you you want to hear the crosses of the moving averages, you know, the, the RSA, you know, and the 14 moving averages or the Bollinger Band. You know, those, it gives you patterns, you know, patterns that it was supposed to tell you what to do, you know, when to enter, when to exit. None of those indicators, none of these patterns will tell you what to do when your order expires. It will not tell you if you are in the right side of the pressure of the market, will not tell you uh, how to trade against yourself in case things go south. You know, many things that over time with the experience using price action, you will become an expert. You will know how to trade exactly at the right, exact minute that the market is giving you exactly the right price to enter the market. So, and uh, all these yellow lines that you see here, to me, are prices, are buy prices and sell prices. I don't identify them, but I know when the market gets me here, 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 or here, I know, that, like for me and for experience, I'm going to tell you just a few, a few steps how to recognize when a price it is to sell and when a price it is to buy. Yeah, but these yellow lines for you to know are just prices. I know when, when it's a buy price and when it's a sell price. I don't put different colors into it, but every one is different. It's a buy price or it's a sell price. And then uh, these are just lines from the MT4, nothing else. Nothing else. Uh, you basically put it from here, MT4, I put it here, and then I know what is the price that I'm going, I'm going after, if it's a buy price or if it's a sell price. So I need to start with an example. I need to start with, uh, with one, you know, one instrument, and I'm going to choose whatever, Euro dollar, for example, and then I go for the pound dollar. These two are the most uh, accurate instruments to trade on a daily basis because the spread is quite convenient. The spread is very low. We're talking about 1.5, 1.8, and the pound dollar gives you the same 1.7, 1.5 spread. So the spread is pretty competitive to do day trading with these two. And also the behavior of the price. The behavior of the price is quite uh, is perfect for, for the intraday traders and also for scalpers. So, um, you know, that's, that's the first thing. And now, the second thing, and I'm going to show you exactly the first steps to understand now uh, price action. Okay? So, I need you to pay attention now. And, of course, and of course get the email of Carla because after this, I need you to pay attention here now, not to focus on anything else. Then you will have the time to install the indicator. Then you can have the time to go after this video over and over again if you need to. But the moment now is when you either get it or you don't get it, you know. 
uh, you don't change anything when we install, when we install the, the, the indicator, you don't change anything. Of course, it's better to use pivot points and price action the first two hours of the opening market. That's what I trade. I trade two, the two first hours of the opening of Europe and the first two hours of the opening of, mar of U.S. market. That's it. That's when the institutions get in. That's when the banks, the banks start making their transactions. That's when the action happens. After the first two hours, the market gets stable, gets boring, gets the spread start to widen. You know, it's just not convenient to do scalping and to basically to enter the market anymore. So if I were you, I recommend you before, you know, understanding price action, when to trade it and how to trade it with, yes, with the instruments that are, I'm going to show you here. So now, if you want to trade the DAX, you know, the German index with this uh, with price action and this indicator, you could. If you want to trade any index with this indicator and price action, you could. Any currency pairs, even gold, all of them respond perfectly to this indicator. Okay, but then I'm not here to show you or to basically tell you how the indicator will set up the strategy. The indicator will give you the frame of understanding price action, but then the experience will tell you how to recognize when the price is to buy, when the price is to sell and which market areas you are trading with, okay? And to study the price mapping, that's how we call it, to do the price map, because before to identify market areas, you know, the market gives you just two market areas. And that's the first thing you need to know. Step number one, you got to know that we're not talking about trend here. We're not talking about trend. We, don't, we do not talk about market trend. The market trend is for analysis. You don't really care how the market is trending for you. You don't really care about that. You care if you are trading into a buy area or buyer's area or into a sale area. That's all you care. Okay? You don't care about the trend. The trend is for the for you know for those uh, that make analysis in the market. We don't talk about trend. We talk about buy area and sale area. The second thing you need to know is that to identify the market areas, you need to do a, a yearly analysis. You need to go, you need to go to March, and March, that's when we start our our year in this market. We don't start in, in December or in January or February. We start in March. March is when the uh, budgets are getting approved, where the the central banks are going to modify their first interest rate of the year. Many things happen in March, and that's when we start identifying our buy area and sale area okay so that's very important for you march any other any other month but march so first it is to set up your map price you need to know the, the you know the path of the of the price since march until now so since we go to March until now, we know what to expect from the market. And we know that, for example, Euro dollar is trading into buy pressure. Dollar CAD is trading into sell pressure. Gold is trading into buy pressure. You know, we know that. We know from March. So first, the, the third one that you need to know is that inside any buy area or sell area, inside those market areas, you will have also a type of prices. You will have a buy price and a sell price. And then the you know the fourth step here is how to set up your your strategy. And basically, what we are after when you are a swing trader, a swing trader, or an intraday trader, or a scalper, because the prices will help you to to trade on any of those on those techniques. Because that's what we are. They're just techniques, and, and depending how you uh, see the market. But the truth is that uh, if you're an intraday trader, you need to to, to start understanding the price to be precise, to be accurate. You cannot go for indicators anymore. You know, indicators are too slow. Indicators are not for you to understand about this market properly. They're too slow. It's like latency with, with the indicators. So, and the fourth thing you need to understand in how is to set up your strategy. You need three things here. You need your entry price, your entry price, like we said here, it's just very easy. You identify either a buy price or a sell price. That's it. Your exit price or your target, it is your take profit, right? 
and how to get out of the buy price or the sell price, I'm going to show you in a few. And then you need to know when you order with the expire. Let's say that you identify properly a buy price and a sell price. You identify properly your target. But then the target never happened. For whatever reason, just it was like two pips missing and the market get you and was like got around you and it was the reversal situation. And you could not, you couldn't get out of your buy transaction. You couldn't get out of your sell transaction at the proper target that you were after. So then what to do there, and that's how we call it, the expiration price. We don't call it stop loss. We call it the expiration price. Why is the expiration price? Because you need to give the market some room to move around your entry point. If you set up a stop loss, for example, you say, okay, well, five pips into my, my entry point, I'm going to set up my stop loss. And then, okay, I'll, I'll, then I go for 10 pips, uh, and then I go for 15 pips or whatever. Any criteria that you set up as a fixed as a fixed criteria into your stop loss, if you trade with the prices, you're doing the wrong analysis. You're doing basically the wrong strategy. You can't give the market exactly five pips to move against you, 10 pips to move against you, or 15 pips to move, to move against you, because it could move against you a lot more. So now, the right criteria here is to understand when, in fact, your order expire. Okay, what is the price that tells you, you know what, the market is not buying anymore. So you get out of the buy transaction and start selling. That's the expiration price. And that's the expiration price when we, I mentioned here at the Telegram, is the price that you see here. Let me, let me show it to you. This is the EP price that I give you, you know, expiration price. So the expiration price is for you to either go and hit the market, you know, to hit the market, or you can use this as a stop loss. I wouldn't recommend you to use this as a stop loss because, like I said, you may enter and you may buy the market. You may sell the market, right? You may buy and sell. But the thing is that when you enter the market, it's going to move against you. It will. How much? We don't know. Maybe 5, 10, you know, 15 pips. We don't know. But that doesn't mean that your buy trade or your sell trade is wrong. You know, it doesn't mean that. It means, it means that you need to give your entry some time to accommodate and they will give you the positive and, the, and your target. But what is important for you is to have the plan B, expiration price. You cannot enter the market without it because it's part of the strategy. So let's go and give the right example and first go for, for the pivot point. So the, the four steps that I mentioned you before is to understand basically the basis of price action. You got market areas first. You got type of prices. You know, you got buy price and sell price. You need to get your three prices before you enter the market. Entry price, exit or target, and expiration price. Once you set up and you got all the right, uh, the right prices and you understand the market pressure that you are trading with, there's no room for mistakes. You know, there's no a place in the market that it could liquidate your account or it could kill you. You know, it will, that will not happen. You need to know when your order expires. And that's the most important one when you are facing a reversal situation. So, Let's go with the euro dollar, for example. Euro dollar is trading above the 110 level up to 120 level, is into buy pressure. So we knew from March that we were trading into a buy pressure with the euro dollar since the 110 level. And the sell pressure in euro dollar, it is from, um, that is below 108 down to 104.50. So you have to know this by memory. Once you, do, once you do your price map, is for the year. So you have to know that the transition between 108 to the 110 is a change of market areas. Euro dollar, whenever it goes from 108 up to 110, it means that it will never come back to the sell pressure area. Sell pressure area at the euro dollar and buy pressure area at the euro dollar. This is the market areas that we're talking about. So now, of course, it doesn't mean that you know, you're gonna buy from 110 up to the 120. I mean, if you're a swing trader, you want to trade every day. You want to take advantage of your, your capital investment every single day. 
especially if you're trading, I don't know, $1,000, $2,000, and so on, you know. So now, uh, even less than that, you could you could trade. I wouldn't recommend to invest in this market less than $1,000, but that's my opinion. So, and then, uh, once you know the market pressure areas, the second step for you is to identify the prices. The question here is, okay, how do pivot points help me out to understand how the market is behaving at this point? So first, you need to know that the market opened here for US exactly at this gray level. The gray level for you means the average price of the day. So if the market opened, if the market opened above the central pivot point or the gray line, the gray line that you see here is telling you the market is going to buy. And if the market opened below, is the market is going to sell. That's the main and easy part of the pivot point. I'm not saying that you had to wipe your strategy based on the pivot point. I'm saying that's the first thing that the pivot point is telling you. If the market opens above it, you buy. If the market opens below it, you sell. Now, the thing here with Euro dollar is that the entire range of the pivot point, because here from above the gray line, it gives you the buyers, right? But all these, uh, these lines that you see here, the red ones, are for the buyers. All of them were with sale prices. All of them were with sale prices. So how, how we trade the euro dollar today? We first went to for the sellers. We went to understand the sellers because the market was below 1750. And that was the market when it reacts below the, the psychological levels. I don't know if you know the psychological prices in this market. If you don't know what I'm talking about, psychological levels, psychological prices, I can explain you that really quick. Okay, so you go for the round numbers. That's the psychological price, psychological levels. You go for the round numbers. For example, if you see euro dollar that is at this point below 118, for example, that's, this is the psychological price. So you say, okay, below 118, the market is into a high price and the market will try to sell. Above the 118, the market will try to buy. This is psychological analysis that I'm doing. So basically now we are below 118 at Euro dollar. The market will try to sell. And then after you are at the, the zero numbers or the round numbers, then you get like um, two more levels as psychological levels. Then you got the 1750, for example, the 50 numbers. Those are also psychological levels. So below 1750 is also to sell. And above 1750 is for to buy or is for the buyers. These are also psychological levels. And that will be pretty much it. Now, of course, we're not talking about that it's going to go from the one above 11750 up to the 118. But that's the idea of psychological levels. That is the idea and how the market reacts into those those um, psychological levels. Yes. Uh, that's, that's correct. That is correct. So now the pure points, it tells you, okay, well, that's it. You know, we're going to buy up to these three levels. That's what it tells you the pure point. It never happened up to the third level. But our strategy today with the euro dollar, it was to buy. But the first transactions here, we were below the 1750 level. And to us, it was to sell. But then we say, okay, well, if we get over the 1750, let me put a line, a yellow line into the 1750 so you can properly see it. Look, 1750 is right here. And then we say, okay, well, we're going to sell because we are below the 1750. We were expecting to get 8 to 10 pips on that sell transaction. And then I say, well, the hedge or the buy stop is going to be at the 1750 level. And if we get over this level, we're going to start buying. This is what we did. We started buying, hedging, 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 hedging until we couldn't, we couldn't buy anymore because the market just got into a consolidation period of the time. And then I said, and be careful because we are getting below the 118 psychological level. So below 118 level, the market will try to sell. And then I say, okay, well, if you get over the 118 level, we never happened. But then I said, if we get above the 118 level, we're going to buy again. 
and the about 118 psychologically the market will go after the 1850 that's what we know it may go up to i don't know 1820 1830 maybe never to 1850 but you have to know that once it gets over a psychological moment psychological price it gets up to this level you go for the 50 ones 50 levels it's considered that a market range in high volume market we're talking about 50 pips Maybe it's never going to give you the 50 pips. It's going to give you 15, 20, 30. It doesn't matter how much. But you got to know how to interpret the market's behavior and psychological levels. So, two points helped excellent today. We were hedging, doing buy stops. And now we're supposed to be out of the buy transaction. We don't have buyers anymore. We're waiting for the sellers. So the pivot points, that's it. That's all you need to know. Once it opens above it, you go to buy. If it opens below it, you go to sell. If the opposite things, let's give an example on the opposite direction, and that was with dollar cut today. Dollar cut today, it opened below the pivot point, the central pivot point. So it told us that the market was going to sell, and that's exactly what happened. So the market was open here. And it, will, it went all the, the way down to the, the, the first gray line here. Of course, we got two more. But the market just sold down to the first one. That's it. But it helped. Of course, it did. You know, it helped a lot. It told, it told us that the market was going to sell today. Dollar got and it did. Just to the, the support one, the S1. So now, the question now is, OK, well, that's, what's going to happen next? And what's going to happen next is that the market will try now to go and sell at the euro dollar down to the central pivot point. Okay, you have to like, you have to see the central pivot point, the gray line, as the magnet of the market. You know, once it opens above, it goes after the the red one. Once it opens below, it goes after the the green lines. After it got it reaches like any of these third one, the the first one, the second or third one, it's going to come back to the gray line again. And once the market is on the first, the second, or the third, down below, it's going to try to reach the gray line again, the gray one. It's the magnet. The magnet. Once it gets far enough, then the magnet is going to try to catch the price again and get get it to the to the, the central pivot point again. Uh, yeah, you got to see it like the magnet of the market. But besides that, let's focus now on the prices. Okay, now, okay, I understand the pivot point. Easy, you know, the, like the, the easy part, how to find the pattern on the, on the pivot point is easy. Let's focus now with the pricing. And let's see what the price is, is telling us right now at the euro dollar. Okay, well, in order to understand the price action, you have to go into the historical levels, I mean, historical prices. To understand the history of the price, it's going to give you how the market react the stats, basically. The statistics of the prices. So it, it, this is just so mathematical, you know, it, it's just math that we're talking about here. If the stats gives you that over 50% of the market will try to sell below the 118, that's what we go after. We go after sell prices below the 118. So for that, you need to understand the historical level. So you go and see the historical behavior of the market on the, below the 118 level. So I'm going to head and put a line here at the 118. And what you see of the last few days, doesn't matter how far you go. You just need historical price. You need to understand the history of the price below the 118 level. So you go and see the last week or, or, or so. And then you see that the market gives you what? Is it giving you lows, like low prices? So it's giving you more sellers, or it's giving you more buyers? Do you have more action here or do you have more action here? And that's what answer you the price. It's telling you, well, of course, the market is giving me, is giving me more lows, more low prices, no more high prices. The market gets stuck in the 118. It doesn't go over for too long. You know, it goes over the 118, but I got to be careful to have a buy transaction above the 118 level. Because I know that the buyers will close the buy transactions and the sellers will try to get in the market and they're going to make the price drop again. And that's the second answer you have. Okay, well, then the price action is getting me the confirmation that below the 118, I go after sell prices and I better off think to sell, not to buy anymore. 
But then you're like, okay, well, am I going to sell here, you know, after all these buyers? And I know that the sellers tried here, they tried here, and they tried here. I know the sellers are already entering in the market, and the buyers are closing, they buy transactions. And then I say, well, I don't move the market, you know. I don't, I'm not a bank, I'm not an institution. I, I don't make a difference in this market. So I'm not going to sell now. I'm not going to sell here. I'm going to wait the sellers and, and then I'm going to enter with, with serious sellers. And that's when you basically wait for the market to give you the first sellers, let's say below the 1786. And, this, and that's when you start selling. So basically what you're doing is like avoiding the consolidation moment. You're avoiding this, avoiding this, this, and this, and this. You're just avoiding to sell beforehand. And the market, if you go to 15 minutes, let me show you. I need to get closer to the price. As you can see, the market, they already try to sell here, you see? But then, if you see the closing of these candlesticks, did they close below the 1786? Or is it that this candlestick closes above the 1786? And that's how you find the confirmation to enter the market. That's when you find and you finally get to understand exactly when to enter. You need to get closer. You need to go to the 15 minutes. So far, we were analyzing the market in one hour. We we're like looking at the prices, seeing the stats, seeing how it behaves above the 118, below the 118. Everything is fine. But you can't trade, if you're a swing trader and if you're a scalper, you can't go for the one hour time frame. You need to get closer. One minute is too noisy. Five minutes, too noisy too. Fifteen minutes is good enough for you. So in fifteen minutes, what you are doing here is understanding if the market is already serious to sell or they're not serious at all. So in my particular case, I told my traders, well, do not sell euro dollar unless we get a confirmation in a candlestick that closes below the 1786. It got to close below it because it never did so far. It closes above this level. So to us, okay, it was, yeah, it was the analysis. It was good. But then what happened? It kept moving up. You know, so that's when you get closer to your strategy. And that's when you start understanding that you cannot sell even though you are below the 118, looks everything fine and whatever. Because if you're a scalper, you go after your 6, your 7, your 8, your 10 pips. So now, if you're selling at the 118 level and then the market goes up 10 pips more, 18, 10, it looks fun. It looks, it looks, it looks okay if you are in, using indicators. But you are trading with the price here. So you cannot misunderstand, you know, the market action here. If you sell, you need to go for a sell price and the market has to show you that they are, you know, like really selling at that point. You cannot tolerate to sell at the 118 level when you know that the 118, it could also take you out. It could take you up to, to here. I don't know if you see these, these shadows here, these candlesticks. But you got like here, you got you got a perfectly a buy transaction to do there, you know, for the 118 out to 11807, 07, you know, 12, 10, you know what I mean? So to do price action, it gets you the most, you know, precise and accurate tool to trade when you are a swing trader. You know, you, you don't you don't like tolerate, you don't have a margin of error, you know. So we're not basically selling here at euro dollar, and we do have a buy stop at the 118 level. And then I say, okay, we're gonna have a buy stop at the 118, and we're gonna close it up to the 1810 level. So everybody knows that whenever the market gets to the 118, we have a buy transaction waiting for you there, and you will buy at the 118. When you're gonna close it? Well, depending on how much, like, like the contract that you're trading with. If you had too many lots, well, I recommend to close like sooner, not to wait 10 pips. If you're relaxed, then you can hold that transaction. But I wouldn't recommend to hold a buy transaction when we are already at the limit. So above 118, we expect the market to give us just 10 pips. That's it. You know, we either you either close it at the seven pips, at the six pips, doesn't matter. That's up to you. 
but we know that we cannot play too much with the buyers anymore. Now we wait for the sellers. The first seller, they fail in the market. You know, if you're trading indicators, oh, I'm sure the area, you know, the RSA is giving you over overbought market here at the Euro. And overbought market doesn't mean anything to us. We're gonna sell only if the price confirm us to sell. But we already are ready to buy again at the 118 price. You know. And you keep doing the same analysis. Same for the pound dollar. The pound dollar is the same thing. So um yeah, same thing at the one at the one yeah, but 117 is all the way below here. We were buying today. We were buying about the 117.50 at the euro dollar. From here, we're just only buying at the euro dollar, only buying. And now we're not selling at the euro dollar, and we do have a buy stop at 118 price. That's what we're doing. You may have sell transactions down below here. You know, here. You may have sell transaction. It's fine. It's okay. You're respecting the price. You may have a sell here, but you never got to to sell the market today ever and we we have a buy stop here and that's all we're doing let's go to the pound dollar now so the pound dollar here is pretty much like uh, the same analysis that i was doing here with the, just now with the with the pound let me delete all these lines i'm gonna go one hour and we repeat the procedure and then we are like, okay, well, the market went below the central pivot point down to the first gray line, uh, green line, and then it went from the central pivot point up to the first red line and the second red line. Fine. So we got the chance to sell and to buy today. Same things on the same market day. Good. And then you're like, okay, well, what's going to happen now with the pound dollar? Are we selling the, selling the pound dollar here, even though all the indicators, uh, the RSA and anything, can basically tell you that you can sell now because the pound, the pound dollar is at the highs, everything is fine, you can sell right at this moment. Are we selling the pound dollar at, at this moment? Regarding the historical levels, let's go ahead and see how the market behaved. First of all, we are below the 133. Psychological level, below the 133, the market will try to sell. And above the 133, the market will try to buy. So first thing first, we are below the 133 level, so the market will try to sell. Are we going to sell now with the pound dollar after all this wall of buyers here? Are we going to sell? Of course not. But let's let's get the market to tell us when to sell, and let the market to tell us when to buy again. So we go after it's one hour historical levels, and let's see the last week how the market behaved below the 113. The one and well, 133. So we go and then, okay, then that is a good answer. I don't know if you can see it, but the market from here went all this way down to here. From here, all this way down to here. And so we get sellers, right? The market is after sellers at the pound dollar. Same here. So the market is behaving with, uh, you know, seller's perspective, the pound dollar. Okay, good. That is my. The second answer that I was I was looking for is it the market really for the sellers below the 133? Yes, it is. For the last month, even more than that, as you can see, this is October. The entire October, the entire until now, we got sellers below the 133 level. Good. Are we gonna sell now? That is the second question. Can I sell the pound dollar now? Well, the answer here it is that you wait for the serious sellers. When they start the serious sellers, well, the sellers will start at the 32.84. So I wait 10 more pips if I want to sell. I'm not going to sell here now. And the answer is because if the market is not getting serious and they don't sell here, most likely it's going to go after the 133 and I have more buys to do. I got 10 more pips that I can get from the market. 10 pips, even like 16 or 15 pips. You know, so I think in as a, a scalper and as an intraday trader, I do have more room to buy here at the pound dollar. You know, I don't need like um, to understand that, okay, well, you just sell, just sell now. You know, you don't go for that. You're like, okay, well, hold on a second. 
Can I sell now right at this point? Isn't it better to wait a little bit more? Isn't it, isn't it that this price the one that takes you down to this level? Is it the price it kind of, you know, you don't need to wait a little bit more in order to sell? You, isn't it that you're too close to the 133 level? And if I'm too close to the 133, isn't it that I'm going to have my buy stop activated and I can get 10 pips, even 15 pips? So if I'm moving before I get the right path of the market, I made my first mistakes trading with price action. You know, so first you need to get your, you know, your mind right and, and first visualize how you're going to make the move, how you're going to trade in the area. You know, you're too close to the 133, so you better not sell right now. You better wait a little bit more. And then you're like, okay, well, I have the Form C coming out, the minutes of the Form C. Important information is about to be released in 10 minutes. And then you're like, okay, well, if I cannot sell now, what am I going to do? Okay, then you go to 15 minutes. You, get, you go back in time. You go to the actual moment. And then you know that a 3303, because remember the spread. If you work with buy, with pending transaction, you need to add the spread into it. So my buy is stop here because I said, well, I cannot sell yet. The market was already selling. You know, they saw here, 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 and also here. Did they really took the price down in any of this area? No, they didn't. So am I, do, am I going to make this mistake? I'm going to sell. If I'm too close to the 133 level, am I going to sell now? Of course you're not. You trade with the price. And you know that you're too close to the 133. So you're going to get ready like this. You're going to have a buy stop at the 133.02 or 3 because you know that you can get up to the 133.10 or 15. And that's one buy transaction for you, a positive one. And then you're like, well, what am I going to sell? Well, you're going to be ready to sell uh, below the 32.84. And that's when you have, of course, a sell stop. Okay. Let's say you trade with the news. And then you're waiting for a correction because of the form C is going to make a correction in all the market. And it's going to be a mess and whatever. You could do that. You know, but just get ready with pending orders. You get the sell stop here and you get a buy stop here. But if the market is not giving you the right entry point, the right entry moment, you just don't make any false move beforehand. You know, you know exactly what's going on. You're too close to 133 price. You can't sell. But then, like I said, you're waiting for information. And then, okay, well, that's gonna, how am I going to be ready? I'm going to be ready for the buy stop here, sell stop here. And then I know if whatever activates, I'm going to be out of it. I need, to be, I need to react quite fast if I go for the buyers because I don't have that much room to fail. Now, if you go for the sellers, it's fine. Like the market is going gonna, is gonna to fall from here down to here. This is your first target, the 132.70. Okay, so you go for 132.70. 132.84 down to 132.70.71. This is your first entry point to sell, okay? And you keep doing that on every and every single one. You know, the dollar yen it was open, uh, open before the uh, below the P, the central pivot point was for the sellers. We saw today too. Uh, gold opened above the central pivot point it was for the buyers. You know, every single one acts the same. Now, before I finish here, let me invite you to the um, live trading session that we are about to start within five minutes. So let me share with you the link so we keep in touch to trade the FOM C. We trade the FOM C now. And before we get disconnected, I see you in the next trading session. Yes. So please be fast now because I need to get out of this, this login. And then you see there a link. Now register now and I'll see you in, the, in, in our live trading room. Okay, so we trade the minutes of the pharmacy. It's going to be published in the next five minutes. Okay, so you got the link. So I'll see you in the live trading room. I'm going to show you there how we trade it and Carla is going to accept you now on that live trading room so you can see my account how we're going to do it 
yes, we expect a good correction. You can't click it, really. Um, how can we do this fast? You made it? Okay. Now, I, we got to be very fast, guys, because the information is going to be published now. Okay, you copy it, and then you, you, you copy it at the, your browser. Yes. You copy it, and then you copy it in your browser. Just copy the link, and then you paste it in your browser, and I really need to go. 